What's up boys and girls? We are back at the Danger Ranger again. At least I'm going to call it the Danger Ranger for now because it's going to be quite aggressive. But uh, had some issues obviously. Every time you do an LS swap you always have issues. It's, you know, you're putting a different motor in a different vehicle so you got to figure things out. But Matt called me yesterday and said uh, my truck won't shift. And this is a race truck application, so majority of the time he's going to be running it in four low, right, Matt? Yep. So anyway, he called me, said the truck's not shifting in four low. Um, so I came down last night, and we fiddled, and we fired it, and we tried just about everything with HP tuners to try to get this truck to shift. And no way would it comply with what I was telling it. So, <clears throat> did a little research and uh, come to find out what ended up happening was he bought a wire harness for an LS swap but it was for an LS swap that was two-wheel drive so it didn't have a four -wheel, any four-wheel drive wires going to the computer so after doing a little bit of research we found that what you have to do to make it shift in four low and read the proper speed readings is you have to hook a wire to number 16 on your red computer wires so you got to unbolt this from your ECU and then you flip it over and it's probably going to be hard to see on the camera but when you look at the back of this it's labeled with numbers and what you want to do now this is just a harness laying on the ground for example this isn't a harness in the truck this wire is actually already installed because this was out of a four-wheel drive but number 16 which is gray and black and on the harness mat bot it wasn't even there so what we had to do was rob a pin which to rob a pin you pop this outer cover off you cut the wire off and you extract it out through the front you shove it through you don't pull it back through so we robbed a wire we extracted it we hooked it to number 16 on the red and I believe last night Matt had it grounded here but now he's got it hidden but anyway it, it's grounded and it's hooked to his ECU on number 16 normally you put it on a switch if you're gonna be running four high you put it on a switch so you can engage and disengage when you're in four low but Matt says this trucks always gonna be in four low so for now we just grounded it with no switch and literally the moment we hook that wire up now the truck corresponds to what I'm telling it with HP tuners and what you want to do is this here is just for your normal driving RPM shifts to adjust it and set it up for racing we want to go in here and yesterday we had it set at 4300 for first to second and then we had second and third at 56 but uh, we had a few issues with the truck <clears throat> when he first tried it after we hooked the wire up uh, the truck had a real real bad misfire to it and it was skipping so when I data logged it with the VCM scanner it was showing the ECU was only getting 12 volts so we got the multimeter out we tested the battery we tested the alternator the alternator was only putting out 12 volts so we immediately did an alternator swap got 14.2 running which is where you want to be and took it out tried it again it still misfired but then we were getting about half disgusted weren't we matt right. both of us but like i said when you get disgusted you just walk away don't get frustrated and you know hammer time anything you just gotta take in information but when we shut the truck off I popped the hood again because again I was frustrated so we double checked that the new alternator was working good sure enough 14.2 I started fiddling with the new Taylor wires that we installed and number three was just laying there it wasn't even connected to the plug so we hooked the sorry not number three but the third one back which would be uh, one two three four would be number five so number five was off we hooked it back up 
Matt backed it down the driveway, did one quick pull and four low, and it shifted bang oh right at 4300 out of first, and then hit the next two gears really nice and smooth, right, Matt? So for you guys with rock crawlers and you're having four wheel drive low issues, now our setup is a 4.8 with a 4L60 and we got the stock transfer case behind it. If you change the transfer case, then when you get into the HP tuners, you're going to have to calculate your gears and go over here to Speedo and your calibration these numbers. Or I'm not sure does the gear if you can figure out the gearing now you probably won't be able to do it with that scale wizard but um, that scale wizard will get you away for tires but basically if you change the transfer case ratio then you're gonna have to figure out your um, output shaft revolutions which, oh, that was right here, sorry, this number right here. Your trans revolution mile, that's going to change. And um, there's been a lot of hearsay about where to put the vehicle speed sensor. On this setup, it's on the tail shaft of the transfer case, which is why we have to run the wire for four low. But if you have a transmission or if you're willing to buy spend the extra money and buy the kit put it on the tail shaft of the transmission rather than the tail shaft of the transfer case then I'm told by what I read don't quote me on this because it's just what I read but if you put it on the transmission then you don't need to worry about tuning for or low it'll shift when it hits a certain RPM just under the high range settings and HP tuners but for four low in an off-road, you know, four by four application, this is what we had to do to make it work. And like I say, literally Matt texted me yesterday around dinner time, and he's like, dude, my truck won't even shift out of first gear. And we played and we played and we played, and I dialed the, um, the normal drive settings down so far that we did actually get it to shift, but it was shifting, like, not good at all. Um, we were to the point we actually thought there might have been something wrong with the transmission, but I said, no, it's, it's got to be this wiring foolishness. So um, hopefully this is going to help you guys out that have done one of these swaps because this can definitely be troublesome. And there's nothing worse than having, you know, a performance V8 application in a small light truck that won't shift when it's supposed to. So... I said to Matt, whenever I help somebody with a project like this, it's start to finish. I make sure I don't want it leaving the yard or going to the track if it's not working like it should. So that's where we're at. And now we're just going to load up the new tune with the higher shift points. And uh, Matt's probably going to back her out and give her a go up the driveway. So after any adjustments on HP tuners, always remember to save, or the adjustments don't do shit when you load it. Next thing is we want power. Matt, we got no power. Trying to make red switch on the oh shit, I'm a dummy. There's power. So once we have power, we're going to write file, write calibration. It's going to take about 30 seconds to do an LS. That's just doing some finishing touches out there. We've got all the important gauges, voltage, temperature, and oil. And yesterday we should have just went off of that because that was showing a slow voltage when it was running. But once the truck started acting up, I'd seen it on the scan and it's like, oh yeah, cool. So there we're written already, close. And we're gonna power off. And uh, whenever Matt's ready, he's probably gonna pull her out and do a test. So, any of you guys that are doing a four-wheel drive, what year Ranger? This here is 86, but it's got a 94 Explorer rear engine motor. Okay. So, what he did to make the drive shaft work, 
I'm going to let him explain it to you because it was pretty simple, but you just got to know what to use for pieces. So, Matt, you tell him what you did, buddy. For the back dry shaft, I used the yoke for the shaft transmission that goes in the transmission, you should say, to an 87 Ford Ranger four cylinder five speed dry shaft. You need a 355 U joint, and then when you go to the back where it's a explorer, it's the bigger joint too of the dry shaft, so you had to get another 355 joint to join the two together, and it fit perfect. And for the front dry shaft, it still has a LS original dry shaft, but I had to change the front joint from the Chev to the Ranger, which I can't remember which one that was now, but I'll try to find them all. It was, it was a easy to get part though, to say the least, yeah. <clears throat> So Chev front drive shaft, Ford back shaft, and then just basically some conversion joints to make it work. So as long as you measure it up, anybody local that's into the drive shaft or U joint business should be able to get you up and going. But Matt basically did it himself with some parts trucks that he had sitting around, eh? And just a few U joints. So that was pretty awesome. He saved, well, about five eleven hundred dollars for two shafts roughly to have them built here in Nova Scotia. So um that's awesome that he was able to save that so I guess our next step is we're gonna try firing it up and see how it behaves when he takes it out and tries it so an ELS swap two very very key things is voltage off your alternator and fuel pressure ready? we're ready warm up just a sec before you uh, just let the transmission warm up for a sec before you get so the sportsman class the truck has to essentially look stock and have mostly stock components but you're allowed to change the motor so we're just letting it warm up here a little bit because LS's are famous for not shifting when they're not warmed up and uh, he's going to try a couple test hits to show you how it shifts now that we got the wire hooked up and got it tuned to, uh, to really chooch. That hits, don't it? I think she can go a little higher than that yet. How'd that feel? Mass airflow sensor was fucked up. Oh yeah, we got her working now, young fella. All right, we got a, We went from 5,800 RPM. Now we got it set at 6,000. We're gonna see how it jumps. Oh, buddy! I think it needs even more. I think that's gonna work pretty good, young. Is it smile worthy? 